That's the problem. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'm just I mean, we don't. Remember that? Yeah. I'm surprised you remember. Yeah. 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 That's just. You don't wear a face. You don't touch it. Please. Remember that this year. No, I have mine. I have mine. <coughs> All right, minutes of the previous meeting board, you all have copies of March 21st meeting and March 21st meeting. What is your pleasure? Do we accept the minutes of those last two meetings? Second? Moved by Trustee Seconded by Trustee Jefferson. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor vote by you. Turn it by. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, bills. We've all got copies of the bills. Any additions, uh, Arsen? No, there's none. Thank you. I'll make the motion to the bills. Second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson. Seconded by Trustee Baker. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. All those in favor vote by the Senate of Iowa. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Correspondence. Okay, the first item I have is a, a letter that came in addressed to actually to Gary Favreau. Um, as I mentioned before, we have an antique car group coming in the, to the area in August. There will be roughly 100 cars. On August 15th, I would love to have them leave Plattsburgh and drive to Rises Point and wander around for the, wander around for the morning and then have lunch in the area. Where would you have where you could schedule some sort of entertainment for them during lunch. Uh, I am thinking at the Civic Center on the lawn, and it could be a picnic-type setting. They could park in the lot near Lakeside Coffee. Maybe someone could be there to welcome them and tell them that there is to, there is to see and where to go for lunch. Is this something you could help pull together? And what do you think would be a good idea? Where for lunch and what entertainment? So I guess they're asking for the use of the Civic Center for a picnic on August 15th. I'll make that motion. I'm sorry, go ahead. Moved by Trustee Garrison, seconded by uh, Trustee Baker. Any discussion? Madder. I just share with you that uh, we, the uh, events committee has already talked about uh, the entertainment that we're going to schedule for that day. It's a little difficult because it's a Monday, but we do have the money for it. Um, we just have to work out the details with the chamber and uh, pick the entertainment and get them hired. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the second more. item I have came from the Champlain Valley Habit. Oh, I'm sorry. You need a motion? <laughs> <laughs> you got it over there. You got it over there. Oh, it's ready to go. Bumper second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it? And you got I did. That? I got okay. it. Any well, discussion, board? There being no discussion, all those in favor, vote by you to send a line. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and the second letter I have is from the Champlain Valley Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you and your colleagues for all your support and encouragement of our mission to help more of Brazos Point's families attain decent, affordable homes. We also wanted to share the fact that we are once again applying to the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation for grant funding on behalf of our homeowners. We are excited about their affordable home ownership development program and its potential benefits to our homeowners both now and in the future. With your support and grant assistance from the AHC, the future of Habitat families continues to shine brightly. And if you have any questions regarding this matter, please do not hesitate to contact us. Jessica L. Sears, Champlain Valley Habitat for Humanity and Treasure. That's just for our information. Yeah. The next item I have came from Amtrak. It's uh, addressed to the mayor. I am invite, writing to invite you all aboard to participate in the fourth annual National Train Day, which will be held on May 7, 2011, 
to promote and celebrate rail travel as an integral part of the current and future national transportation system and in recognition of the rich tradition of rail in your community. It was a quite lengthy letter and uh, apparently on May 7th there's going to be events held in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Los Angeles, and Chicago. That's the most informative of us. We really can't do anything this year because by that time that station will be under construction and uh, I wouldn't want a bunch of people around there at that time. There you go. Actually, Mr. Mayor, uh, the Historical Society, uh, because this is the fourth year, we always try to do something because from what I can determine, the we're the only place between here and Albany that's been, that celebrates this. So what we're doing this year, because we don't have the station to use, we're probably just going to have uh, somebody come in and do a program on um, on the railroad station. Well, hopefully, we're trying to get a DNH person. Uh, just come to our one regular one of our regular meetings, which are open to the public, and just have them <coughs> talk about it. So that will be our celebration this year for uh, train day. All right. Thank you. Okay. The next item: New York Rural Water Association. Um, the New York Rural Water Association will be honoring our 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 year members at our upcoming 32nd Annual Technical Conference and Exhibition in Saratoga. Your system has been a member of the New York Rural Water Association for 20 years and we would like to recognize you at this event. There will be a sign posted throughout the conference which lists these honored members. We are very proud to have the support of these members. On behalf of the staff and board of directors of the New York Rural Water Association, we thank you for your continued support to the association. And they they sent a certificate along with that. And I'll move on. Montgomery Holes, Hook and Ladder and Company. At a recent village board meeting, the village board approved new guidelines defining an active firefighter. The fire company respectfully requests that the village board rescind the motion as these guidelines were not approved by members of the fire company and we feel that implementing the guidelines the board approved will actually deter membership instead of retaining them. We also request that the board, the village board, accept the definition of an active firefighter as is currently defined by our company bylaws. That was from Gerald Roberts. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Go ahead, please. Um, I agree we should rescind the motion that we made uh, a couple of meetings ago. However, I do want the public to know that the uh, guidelines that we approved were those presented to us by the fire department. Uh, the mistake that was made was not every member was on the committee that, uh, that made up the, uh, the guidelines and it never did get back to the whole, the whole fire department. So uh, I'm going to make a motion that we, we should uh, rescind the guidelines that we approved and accept new guidelines based on what is currently in the bylaws. I'll second that. Moved by Trustee Huffman. Seconded by Trustee Jefferson. Is there any discussion there? Yeah. One thing I asked, so they got everything done this time? So they know what they're, where they're going, who's getting them, uh, you know, reduction? Yes, yeah, it's, <coughs> it's, it's all done. 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 Yeah, it's all done. done. It's based on pure active members. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor vote by you should sign a bye. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. The next item I have is a thank you for, uh, excuse me, it's from the U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce, uh, U.S. Census Bureau. Thank you for taking the time to confirm the le legitimacy of U.S. Census Bureau field representatives and the work they've been assigned to complete. Many people do not realize that in addition to the decennial census done every 10 years, the U.S. Census Bureau also conducts various surveys throughout the decade on important topics such as unemployment, crime, housing, and health. One of these surveys is the American Community Survey, a congressionally mandated monthly survey that provides detailed social and economic data for federal, state, and community planning and policy setting. And to conduct these surveys, they employ a staff of professional field representatives uh, to contact randomly selected households, either in person or by telephone. And all field representatives have photo ID badges that must be shown to the respondent. Uh, field representatives are required by law to keep all collected data confidential. And uh, if anybody wishes, they can, the residents, to visit their website at www.census.gov. 
apparently they were in the village a week or so ago and they needed to be looked into. What was that, excuse me, what was that website again? www.census.gov. Century? Census, S-E-N-S-U-S, C-E-N-S-U-S, excuse me. Uh, the next we, item. Huh? On that letter, uh, our assessment went down 44,000, but our population went up over 200. The new census. The next item I received was a certified letter from um, American Legion, Montgomery Post 912, and it was actually a, a form for the renewal of their liquor license, and that's just informational. And then at the last meeting, we had a request from the Samuel D. Champlain Center stage. Um, they requested those flags, but along with the flags, they also asked the, the board's um, consensus onto an events board. And we didn't give approval or disapproval, or, and they would be interested in looking into purchasing one, possibly. Jerry actually has more information on that. Well, we've talked about it in our meetings about getting one of these events for it, even a, either an electric one, electronic one, or something similar to maybe what they have at the fire department <clears throat> to put out here. We're thinking maybe here at the rec center, because this is where most of everything goes on, just to be able to announce to the public um, what's happening, like uh, the hockey tournaments and the skating club and the events that we have on the, uh, the stage this summer. Um, those kinds of things, like this antique car thing that's coming in. And what the committee would like to know is if the board um, is willing for us to take a look and get a, gather information on it. Um, we, what we would do would not be any uh, cost to the village except probably to put it up. And what we would probably recommend is that whoever is going to be using it would be the ones that would maintain it. That would, they would be the, wouldn't fall on Mike O'Brien to do it or Carol or, or myself. If we're having an event, historical society, then we were the ones that would make sure that the, that the notice is there. And really all we're asking for is if the board thinks it's a good idea, we'll look into it. If not, we don't want to waste our time. I guess we have other things to do. I think anytime we can promote the village, it's a great idea, especially if there's no expense to the village. I also want to add that, uh, you know, we got an excellent uh, uh, grant from uh, New York State Council of the Arts this year. We had $2,750, plus we had a little bit left from last year from what stewards had given us. And right now we have, um, we have two more weekends we have to fill, but we're waiting for two groups. We're going to have 12 weekends of entertainment this summer, and uh, that's no cost to the village, no cost to the taxpayers and it's all free and open to the public. And last year we had, I'm going to say, probably an average of 200, 250 people each night. And one night we had a downpour when rest at, when um, night train played and we still had 75 people that came out in the pouring rain. So it's been very successful and people are already asking about what we're doing this summer. So we've chosen um, everything from the regional theater, which we're hoping Pfizer will pay for because they have for the last three years. And um, we've got um, bands, and we've got you know different kinds of entertainment. So um, an events board would be nice. Where we we work on ways all the time to get the word out uh, to let people know what's going on. So you need a motion for that. If you are all willing to move forward with it, I'll make that motion. Second it. Moved by Trustee Jefferson. Seconded by. Trustee Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor, answer by the mayor. Aye. 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 First thing on the agenda is uh, my appointments for next year. And uh, the deputy mayor is Brian Jefferson, village clerk, two-year term. Carol Hanfield, deputy village clerk. Tracy Green, two-year term. Treasurer, Mark Samuel Turtle, two-year term. Registrar, Carol Hanfield, two-year term. 
Deputy Register, Tracy Graves, two-year term. Attorney, Tom Remain, one-year term. Acting Zealous Justice, one-year term, is John Favreau. Budget Officer, Arsene Letourneau, one-year term. Historian, one year, Donald Lucene. Youth Commissioner, Dan, Dan P. Letourneau, one year. Library Board Trustee, Donald Racine, five years. Library Board Trustee, Tim Turo, four-year term. I hate to tell you this, but he didn't get sworn in for a year. <laughs> so he's here tonight, Carol, get him. <laughs> the Zoning Board of Appeals, Grant Martin, fulfilling the unexpired term of Tim Lincourt. Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Joseph Proof, five year term. Zoning Board of Appeals, alternate Ben Aro, one year term. Planning Board member, Maggie Berry, five year term. Planning Board Alternate Gary Favreau, one year term. Clerk to the Zoning Board, Carol Hadfield, one year term. Clerk to the Planning Board, Gary Favreau, one year term. The Depository of Rivers National, oh, no, uh, Champlain National Bank, uh, and Bank North, and official newspaper of the Trust Republic. Excuse me, Mayor, did you um, say Rebecca Becky, Deputy Treasurer? It's Rebecca Pelton. I think you missed it. Yeah. Rebecca Diesel. I had Diesel to help me. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rebecca Diesel is the deputy treasurer of the year term. Thank you. Uh, board, does that acceptable? I need a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the appointment of the mayor. Second. <coughs> Moved by uh, Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Hopper. We a discussion. It says, uh, all those in favor, both of you said aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, commission appointments. Uh, there's nothing. These are mine, and I don't need any help. <laughs> uh, police and Judicial. Dennis Roberts, Chairman. John Hutto, Co-Chair. Fires and Codes and SEQR. John Hutto and Brian Jefferson. Public Works, Sidewalks, and Streets. John Hucko and Francis Baker. The water system, Brian Jefferson, Dennis Roberts. Sewer system, Dennis Roberts and John Hucko. Electrical, Brian Jefferson and Francis Baker. Flood control and storm sewers, Francis Baker and Brian Jefferson. Personnel and insurance, John Hucko and Dennis Roberts. Planning and development, Francis Baker and Dennis Roberts. Shared service committee, Brian Jefferson and Francis Baker. Uh, Civic Center, Parks, Beautification, and Shade Trees, uh, Francis Baker and John Hucko, Library and Historian, and Senior Youth, Seniors and Youth, Dennis Roberts and Brian Jefferson. Mr. Mayor, I have one question. Uh, the Community Events, that committee was established last year. Yeah. It's not on here. Is that under the Civic Center or is that a separate committee? That's a separate committee and I don't think we have any, ever assigned anybody to Yeah, we did. There was John and myself. We were on it last year. I didn't know if you could so consolidate it this year or no, I didn't. not here. The uh, clerk gave you this list. No, my mistake. I will uh, yeah, we'll put them on it for bringing it up. Yeah. We didn't change anything, so it's just right. the same. Well, I didn't know if you consolidated with the uh, no. Civic Center. Thank, thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Would you say the government policy. Did you say it was Trustee Huckle and yeah. Sorry about that. The procurement policy. It says this. This is a resolution, by the way. You will follow. Set forth the policy for procuring of the village of Ross's Point to meet the requirements of general municipal law, section 104B. Codes and services are not going to go through this because it's exactly the same as it was last year. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Uh, I said that the uh, thresholds change. No, we amend, we amended them. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, right too. We amended them back in October. Yeah. Okay. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Hockle. Uh, we'll call <coughs> vote. Okay. Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee Baker. Aye. Trustee Roberts. Aye. And Trustee. Apple. Aye. And the mayor votes aye. <coughs> okay. 
investment policy. That hasn't changed either. Does anybody want to know? Move it. What? <laughs> I'll second that. Moved by Trustee Huffro, seconded by Trustee Jefferson. Uh, any discussion? There being no discussion, uh, all those in favor vote by using Senate aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Rules of procedure for public meetings. Board of Trustees of Village of Ross's Point. This was accepted and adopted in December 7, 1998, and reviewed April 4, 2011. And I believe there's no changes. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Baker. Any discussion? Any discussion, Lord? All those in favor vote by user side. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Yeah. Village travel policy. And this is uh, receipts. Receipted meal allowances. Breakfast twelve dollars, lunch fifteen, dinner twenty four. Mileage is forty two cents a mile. But that comes up next anyway. Uh, the policy is the same. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, second by Trustee Roberts. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor of vote by user side of aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Schedule of meetings uh, for next year April 4th, April 18th, May 2nd, May 16th. May 31st, 4 p.m. That's to accept the ballots. June 6th, June 20th, July 5th, because of uh, 4th is a holiday, it's on Tuesday. August 1, August 15th. September 6th, another holiday. September 19th, October 3rd, October 17th. November 7th, November 21. December 5th, December 19th. January 3rd, Tuesday. January 17th, Tuesday. February 6th, February 21, Tuesday. March 3rd, March 17th, and March 18th, 2012, at 4 p.m. And need a roll call vote. And at the same time, to authorize the clerk to publish a legal notice on this. I'll put that for a motion. Okay. Moved by Trustee Jefferson and second by Trustee Baker. Any discussion? If not, so we'll call a vote. Uh, Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee Baker. Aye. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Huffman. Aye. Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Okay. We have. Uh, Resolution for the authority to sign the budget. You didn't do your mileage resolution, George. Oh. Forty-two cents a mile. Can you a motion. I'll make a motion to accept that. Oh, okay. A second. Moved by uh, Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Roberts. Uh, and uh, motion discussion. The mileage. Oh, mileage. Yep. Any discussion? Not all those in favor of holding your side of aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Uh, I have a resolution to adopt the budget, but if we're not adopting it, I need to read it. the budget, I take it. Okay. All right. I don't have to pass that. Okay. Uh, 
authorize the mayor to sign a contract for the, uh, uh, the attorney, the village attorney agreement. I'll make that motion. Second. George, excuse me, uh, you missed one before then. The authority to sign the legal documents is a resolution regarding a grant. Guidelines for projects over fifty thousand dollars. It's that. Okay. Let me read it. Or you want yeah, to? go ahead. Thank you. Please. Whereas this organization has received a special grant in the 2009-10 New York State budget, and whereas there are specific requirements and regulations governing the expenditure of these funds, now therefore this body resolves the following: administration of all funds under this grant will be in accordance with all terms and conditions contained in guidelines for projects over fifty thousand dollars or those involving construction fiscal year 2009-2010 provided by the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation, that George A. Rivers, as mayor of our organization, is hereby authorized to sign legal documents on behalf of our organization that such signature is acknowledgement of the acceptance of this body of compliance with all terms and conditions of the grant agreement to be executed for the grant. This resolution shall take effect immediately. The question of the foregoing was duly put to a roll call vote, which resulted as follows. I'll put that part of the motion. Second. Uh, moved by Trustee Jefferson. Seconded by Trustee Hopper. This grant is development of the village of Ross's point of downtown park and lake access. How much is that going to cost? Free. Free. It's all free? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But we're bound by their rules, is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah. Which are like the, another book. Yeah. Our matches labor. Yeah. Most of it's been done. Yeah. yeah. Was it just landscaping, stuff like that? Yeah. It's all in landscaping, mm -hmm. uh, I think some trees. They, they buy everything, seeds? Uh, I don't think they buy the trees. We get them through the, the power authority. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Schedule, mm -hmm. site access. September two, 2008. Uh, purchase of park furniture and signage. Central Dollar Grant. Site landscaping. Right? And project completed by, by August. That's it. You motion it over? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <coughs> motion. Second. Okay. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Hopwell. A roll call vote. Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee Baker. Aye. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Hopwell. Aye. 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 That's got to be on the supplemental budget, Donald. <laughs> no, it's on your front page. Now is your one for the um, village attorney. You have to get authorization to sign that agreement. Uh, yeah. The attorney, and I think it's the same. Let's see. Love it. One hundred and fifty dollars an hour for out of court. One hundred and seventy-five dollars for in. I'll make a motion to accept that tonight. I, I, I just have one question based on Mr. Maskell's comments earlier is like is this something that we need to renegotiate and see if we can find a, a, an attorney at a cheaper rate? Can you yeah. sign it without a budget? Pardon? Can you sign it now without a budget passed? Once I sign this, it's done. Should we try to negotiate with another lawyer? I don't hardly think so. This is my own personal reasons. I mean, I mean we had this guy for a long time. He knows our business. And an sometimes it's better to pay a little higher fee, but you know. And I don't think you're going to find anybody cheaper. No, so he's kind of a specialist too. You know, all the lawyers, you know how they are, they're small. Oh, no, I know. Precise. Right? And, you know and is he willing to help us out a little bit there, say $95 an hour instead of 100 bucks an hour, whatever it is? I mean, come on, just, we're down to nickel and dimes here. It's ridiculous, but. We're going to dollars here in a little while. They all count. 
Over the length of how long is the contract? One Come year. Here, one year. One year? A lot of times, Bill, you just got to go to an attorney or an engineer. Oh, no, I understand. Oh, yeah, no, I understand that, too. Yeah. Because if you don't, then you make a mistake and you have to go back, <coughs> excuse me, to the attorney to straighten it out. So it's better to start from step one with the attorney or the engineer and just follow the protocol. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Protocol vote. Excuse me, who seconded that? I had Brian Jefferson for the... But then Dennis spoke oh, up and I didn't get a second. Oh, yeah. Do you want a second? No, John. Did. John did? I just asked the question. Sorry. Uh, Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee Baker. Aye. Uh, Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Hawkins. Aye. The mayor of those. Aye. Now, your next item is uh, authorization to sign the amendment for the Verizon lease agreement. Yes. Yes. <coughs> I don't believe that you guys have got a copy of this. No, uh, I just came in this afternoon by email. But uh, we agreed, that, as you know, it's been a fighting battle to get them to put that antenna up. So uh, we agreed verbally, uh, and uh, the contract isn't here, but they're, they're starting to pay rent for that tower in July, whether the antenna's up or not. And that's what this is about. They are still moving around, but we're going to get well, cell pay us. service. They're going to pay us. And I think if they're paying us, what is it, uh, our said? $1,200 a month. $1,200 a month. I think that eventually I'll get, I'll get an antenna up there. Was that the one up by my uncle? What, where the antenna's at? On the village water tank. Water tank. Go on the water tank. Uh, if it goes. Well, we have a signed contract, but they just have procrastinated right along with that. What's that for cell phones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verizon. And I was told, well, Verizon is a good source. Yeah, Verizon's a good source. Yeah, Verizon's a good a good source. Right? That they're famous for doing this. They go around and get all these contracts, right? So nobody else can get there. Mm -hmm. And we signed that contract a couple of years ago. July. So we put the heat to go either do something or we're going to break the contract. So they came back with this, they're going to pay us in July. So we'll see where it goes. It's fine to get paid, but we should still get the cell mm -hmm. We want a cell tower. That's what we want. Yeah. That's what we started that way, right, Kelly? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, we'll it's fine to sign a contract, really. but we're not going to make them do Progress it. Progress is slow. Oh, yeah. slow. Jeez, there he is. And expensive. You sent him a lawyer, a, a letter from the lawyer. Well, that's <laughs> we had the lawyer send him a letter, and then this is the actual we got back. <laughs> that's my objection, my concern. Okay. So you, you need a motion, yeah, you need, need authorization to sign it. Yeah. And when they send it to us, according to them, they will sign it first and send it to you. We'll have the authorization. Yeah. Move it. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor of vote by your side of aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. And that's it for me. Trustee Jefferson. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Rivers. One thing on my agenda tonight, I request, we'll put this in form of a motion. I'll request authorization for Danny Gay and Eugene LeClaire to attend a one-day seminar in Potsdam, New York on 420-2011 as part of their hours to keep up their certification. So I'll put that forward with the motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Baker. There, Bill, there's the travel. Certification, so got to have them. Sewer plant, water plant, right? Uh, municipal electric, all these are all necessary trips. Same with us, we have certifications, I've got to do it. Yeah. They're jumping the car together though, right? Not two cars. Oh yeah, we only got one. They take it your electric car, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> no, that's what we got it for. Instead of paying mileage. That's all I have in my agenda tonight. Thank you. Sorry, Any other discussion, board? If not, all those in favor of holding the set of aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
All right, Trustee Baker. Thank you, sir. Trustee Roberts. Uh, first thing I'd like to report is uh, I'd like to remind uh, the, the parents and the youth that we have a lot of summer programs and fall programs, and the applications need to be in by Wednesday, April 6th. Our summer programs are such as t-ball, baseball, and softball, tennis, arts and crafts, reading, swimming, and fall programs are soccer and bowling. So if you are interested, please sign up at your local schools or call Jan Eterno at 297-6921. Uh, the next thing that I have, um, our uh, trustee did complete the, uh, the audit for the justice records, and reported that in court records are in excellent condition. It was an excellent audit and control procedures are in place. Fort Clerk Marie Queen is to be commended for an excellent job on record keeping. The records of Justice LaValle and Favreau have been reviewed by the treasurer and appear to be satisfactory. So do you need a motion to accept this, or, or is this just... Do we need a motion to accept that, or is that... Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Yeah. To accept the audit. Second. Trustee Baker, second by Trustee Jefferson. Any discussion? There being no discussion. All those in favor, vote by you. Who's on the bye? Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. The last thing I'd like to do is just take, uh, I realize it's late, but uh, I think it's important that uh, residents realize just what we're getting out of the uh, Dodge Memorial Library. Our librarian did an excellent uh, PowerPoint presentation on statistics and usage of the library over the last three years and how it has grown. As an example, um, our library collection has increased from 2008 to 2010. From uh, uh, children nonfiction books went from 792 to 5,108. Our adult nonfiction went from 2,969 to 3,179. And um, library circulation um, was up 190% for children fiction over the last three years. And the same thing with adult fiction, it increased 38%. Um, changes at the library, full-time library, library director effective July 1st, 2009. Uh, we have an adult reading room, a children's area, three new computers for the usage, a new circulation desk. The library is open 34, 35 hours per week. We do numerous outreach programs as well as library sponsor program. Some services that are offered free to the public are internet and uh, WIF uh, usage, book lending, children's programs, summer reading program, community <coughs> bulletin board, uh, music club, and a space available for meetings. Um, internet usage has increased 62% uh, over the last three years with three terminals in 2008 uh, we had 1,373 users in 2010, 1,982. Um, outreach services. We do monthly visits to three area preschools and a child, child care learning center providing a story and an educational activity. Book deliveries to preschool, resources to local school for research assistance. Uh, some of the outreach programs. In 2009, the, the library has touched the lives of over 1,300 children ages birth to 12. In 2010, they touched 1,800 children. Um, library sponsored programs, 2008 they had seven. 2009 we had 68. And 2010 we have 102. Uh, summer reading attendance. This is great, our kids are going to the library in the summertime. Um, in 2008 we had 105 and in 2010 we're 449. So you can see the library is getting used in the summertime. We do outreach to overseas. We provide unused books to military troops overseas through Operation Paperback. We provide used books to military bases in the United States through Operation Paperback. Um, so just as an, as an example, in 2008 we had a patron usage totaled 5,837 people. In 2009 that increased to 6,118. And in 2010 patron usage totaled 6,836 people. That's a 13, a 15% increase over three years. And we have a total number of registered patrons. <clears throat> 2008, we had 253. 2009, 494. And 2010, 
684. The regular uh, borrowers have increased 170 percent over the last three years. We received grants. We applied for 24 grants. 11 grants were received, totaling $8,564. Um, so we. The, the point here is we have seen a continual increase in the use of our public library. And that is the vision, is to keep the public library um, in use and have uh, um, the increased usage over the, the next four coming years. So I, I, I thank Don for giving us this report. It's, it's very important. I had no clue that our library would use as much as it is. And if I can just add one thing today, we received a check in the mail through our central library office, Clinton Essex Franklin Library System, for over $1,200, and that's part of the state that we received. So I can get that tomorrow. <laughs> so I'd like to give uh, yourself a wholehearted thank you, as well as your library board, for a fine job. And if I can, if I can add, um, the grants that I receive are generally for um, programs, and they don't cost anything. So therefore, additional programs to the library, and all it's costing is my time in there anyways. So I'm that's, all for that library. Yes. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up in that library. I know. I know. But just I, so I want to see it get successful. Thank you. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nothing. Well, thank you, sir. Donna, on behalf of me, I have to commend you what you have done with that library. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know what it was like beforehand. And like I said, I don't want to use personalities and I'm not going to. But it's been nothing but positive. Well, thank you. We have a lot of support. It's been great. Carol, we have to find money for the roof. I'm working on grants. All right. I'm working on grants. Oh, that one on our head. Yeah. If I were to make a comment on the roof bumper, the roof is 104 years old. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> and it wasn't made for Dr. Dodge 104 years ago, so it's cost us nothing for that yeah. time. I sometimes look at that roof and think we owe it. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm fine, outstanding historical building. It's one of the two we've got left. But speaking as a historian, I can't even begin to. And I think part of that it's part of some of the, the duties that I've been writing the grants. And that's what I've written to for, to help with the, um, the roof. So we're just waiting to hear that. In, in the words of Mr. Ewart, the board of uh, the Dodge Library president, the Dodge Library is a jewel in the crown of the village of Rouse's Point. It's gaining such um, a reputation. It's gaining such a reputation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why is your building open? I would be asked five or six years ago. And why is there anyone there? And why can't children use it? And why, why, why uh, walk into the library and plaster and say, oh, you're from Rouse's Point? Are you a trustee there? And it's not children uh, user friendly and so on. And now it's just one compliment after another. We're in line. And what the state wanted was for us to follow Vermont because we were way behind and make it a center of village activity. And this lady has done that. And I, I think she deserves a round of applause. <laughs> All right, Carol, do you have anything for us? No, I do not. Our right, Sam? I just want to report that the uh, state auditor is still in the office. He came last Monday and maybe back tomorrow. Yeah. Is that it? Yes. Ryan? Thank you. And with that, I'll open it up to the public. Anybody wishing to address the board may do so. Go ahead, Jerry. Three months from today, the 4th of July celebration will be all over. <laughs> I just want to let you know the committee is meeting um, every, every month. And um, we've got some new things scheduled for this year. Um, we're going to have a 5K run. And um, also a lot of the old things, but one of the really special things that I think that's happening is the Patriot flag is coming to Ross's Point on that Friday night. And for those who are not aware, it's a flag is 30 by 60 feet. It's going to be flown in 50 states in 50 weeks. And it's going to end up at uh, Ground Zero on 9-11. And uh, Rouse's Point, from what I could determine the last time I looked at the website, is one of five places in the state of New York, not including uh, New York City, that the flag is going to be flown. And that's thanks to Tom Middleton from Vermont, who's the coordinator for, for Vermont. But other than that, the committee's working hard to get, you know, get uh, good events for the whole weekend. So watch for posters and press Is that event for the flag that is turning out to be uh, quite the event? We, we, we 
anticipate to have quite a few uh, participating fire departments and uh, uh, Port Patrol police agencies here. It should be quite the thing. I'm setting up. I'm setting up the honor guard. Perfect. And the bag, uh, pipers in the bag, and the, yeah, and the it's, drummer. It's going to be really nice for the village. Quite the honor. We sent out a lot of invitations. I uh, don't know how many will come. But we did. We invited a lot, like the, the governors and the town of governors and all the senators and their <coughs> representatives. And we sent President Obama um, an invitation and Hillary Clinton. She's been here before. So, But uh, even if they don't come, it puts the name of Ross's Point in front of their face. And that, that's just as important sometimes. So. Is that it, Jerry? That's it. Harry, you got any words of wisdom for us? <laughs> um, I, I know it's going to come as a tremendous disappointment to the board, but I'm going to do this in the abridged Cliff Notes version because of the length of the meeting tonight, okay? I'll just give you a couple of highlights. There's one thing I did want to comment on briefly. We were talking about mandates. We have approximately a $250 million budget at the county, and 90% of that budget are mandates. So we, we have discretion over about $25 million. And, and it and it's getting worse and there's no but there's no relief at all and the cuts uh, you know you're talking about village cuts the county cuts are going to be in the millions of dollars and we're looking at Medicaid probation Clinton community social services health care and the worst one that I see is as being totally onerous for all of us is that Medicaid can change on a 30-day notice. That means that they don't have to wait six months or a year. They can call us up and say, next month, the Medicaid formula is going to change, and you may have to come up with an extra 500 or a million dollars next month for Medicaid. It is, it is unbelievable, the things that are in this budget. They're killing us by, and there's a lot of little things too, it's sort of like death by pinpricks. It's, they're, they're after us all the time. And how that translates into a county uh, tax rate, I, I don't have a clue at this point, but we're at 588, and that's our goal. And whether we get there or not, I don't know, but we're going to make every effort to do that. But it's going to be extremely hard because the state of New York is putting all these new burdens on us. Um, I wanted to quickly talk about the airport, which is kind of a... Uh, a real positive, employments are up 42%, but the real highlight is, and I know that we took some criticism for this on the parking, but we, we've gotten $60,000 in the first month, and uh, we're going to probably hit a profit of somewhere between four hundred and fifty dollars and $500,000 in a year on parking alone. You're going to see a new garage down there, and you're going to see a new airport addition because we are at 100,000 employments, we're going to go to 250 over the next three to five years, and we're going to build, we're going to add on to the airport, we're looking for grants and funding, but part of the debt service will be paid by uh, the uh, parking fees. Uh, the next one, you probably read about this in the paper, and I just wanted to comment briefly on it, uh, the home health care services, which of course a number of people in Rouse's Point have. Uh, we are looking at this point in a request for proposals to send that out to see if we can uh, look for other alternatives. Government today is looking at alternatives, cheaper alternatives. It costs us two million dollars for this program and we're going to have requests for proposals to see. The service has to be provided. The beauty of this is that the county has a license to do this. There are no new licenses in the state of New York so we can sell that license, still provide the same service, and hopefully take care. There were many residents from Rouse's Point at the meeting telling me great stories, and I know personally uh, of some relative to my father-in-law in terms of, of services that we received uh, here in Rouse's Point. But it, there comes a time when you have to say, can we afford this or not? So we're in a position where we're going to request for proposals, look at our license and see what we haven't made our decision. Maybe nobody will bid. We don't know. But other counties have done it, and they've saved an awful lot of money. The last one, quickly, uh, maybe I owe the fire department an apology in my quest to try and get a 10% tax relief. Uh, I think I may have created an issue relative to standards, uh, in, and uh, this came up at the school board meeting uh, when we talked about it. And, of course, my position has always been that each department sets up its own standards. It does not. Uh, there is no uniform standard, and apparently in, in the, in the uh, quest to get standards in Rouse's Point, there was some confusion about that issue. 
they, they didn't care what the standards were. I was quoting county averages at the meeting, which dealt with approximately uh, 45 calls a year, but that was just an average. It was not something that, that was being mandated by us. But I also just wanted to comment quickly, this is the easiest job I have ever had in terms of trying to sell to seven different boards the fact that firemen should get a 10% tax reduction. It was unanimous on the part of every single one of those boards once they realized the facts. And I hope it does something for the issue of retention and recruitment because that's the purpose of this thing. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Got it. Seconded by Trustee Hockwell, seconded by Trustee Baker. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Stick around for the first. Thank you. Josie, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Well, I've better meetings. I've worse. Oh, no.